Hello, this is another in the series of lectures by the Seas Health Corporation on why is there so little relief from so many musculoskeletal problems. Today we focus on patellofemoral syndrome and the numerous etiologies, um, also sometimes called parapatella syndrome. Uh, so these lectures are educational and not intended to manage individual patients. They are not a substitute for patients seeing healthcare professionals. Among the reasons our patients vary, no brief presentation substitutes for formal training, and they're primarily designed for the patients coming in to see us at our clinics. My name is Mark Brzezinski, MD, PhD, certified personal trainer. I'm a functional movement specialist, cardiologist, internist. And I've gone through my history on um, previous lectures. And you can freeze this if you're interested. So most of us know the classic parapatella syndrome or patellofemoral syndrome. The patient either points to the center of their kneecap or grabs around their kneecap, and that's somewhat of a classic sign. And what in about, at about 20 to 30 degrees flexion, they feel an a uh, popping or a, a instability in the knee. So going to the lower left of this image, and this image again is from the very good book, Kinesiology of the Musculoskeletal System, which I highly recommend. The patella enters the really narrow groove between the condyles at around 20 to 30 degrees, which is more most vulnerable um, to pop back in and out. And that's shown in the upper right hand corner image. And three of the muscles that attach to it are uh, vastus medialis, vastus uh, intermedius, and vastus lateralis. And there's often a lot of um, uh, controversy over the fact that la uh, vastus lateralis comes in uh, superior to inferior, whereas vastus medialis tends to come in uh, laterally. Uh, and most of the, almost all of these displacements are lateral. And so we want to make the point that there's many factors that can come into play. The first consideration is there's two muscles that cross double joints, the hip and the knee. And that would be um, uh, rectus femoris, the center quadriceps muscle, and also uh, the iliotibial band. Rectus femoris is the yellow arrow. The iliotibial band is the blue arrow. And one of the things, the iliotibial band is represented very much as it um, people think of it, just attaching to the proximal tibia, but it actually has five attachments, and this is so common with structures around the knee. We think it ha they have one attachment when they have a multiple, and the iliotibial band attaches very strongly, it's a dense tendon, to the patella. So in addition, we have the green arrow, vastus medialis, and we have to take various factors into account. So with internal or external rotation of the foot, the tracking is no longer going to be down the center of the condyles. There's going to be a tendency for it to track laterally because of the two muscles across the two hip joints. But in addition, we have to look at anatomical structures like the acetabulum. Is the acetabulum in its correct position? Is the femoral neck antiverted or retroverted? These all can play a role. And so, um, this is shown in the image to the right, which we generated with the kinesiology program. If we just in, uh, evert the foot, I think in a previous slide I called this inversion, uh, we can see that the patella changes its position um, with respect to the condyles, green arrow, with just inversion. And so if you look at the complexities during gait or a uh, deep knee squat, but gait in particular, there's a, a, a lot of changes. During gait, 
the uh, as you know, during keel strike, you go into um, pronation, where the tibia and to some degree the femur internally rotate, but they don't rotate to the same degree. And so this results very often in the, the patella being in a lateral position. In this particular patient, this is a patient who had bilateral um, trochanter pain. I know that the term bursitis has gone out of favor, but to all standard iliotibial band um, exams, there was no evidence of a tight iliotibial band. But we talk about constantly analyze gait, analyze squats, analyze the nervous system. On the single leg squat, she goes straight medial. And this is the cause of her iliotibial band related pain at the trochanter, but it's also pulling the patella laterally. So this is why you have to take into account the kinetic chain and the neurodynamics. Uh, you know, the same thing holds for poor proprioception. You're not going to have correct firing of the muscles, which is very often a cause of ACL injuries. And so you'll have motion with the femur relative to the tibia. Here we can cause from neurologic problems. And in, in this case, it's anatomical. But from neurological issues, we can have the patella track incorrectly. So it's not simple. So we need to evaluate the anatomical structures at the hip in particular. We need to look at foot and hip position. We need to look at um, these three muscles in particular, but also other muscles. We need to do an excellent neurologic exam of the extremities. And then on top of that, when we have all that information, beforehand we get a gait analysis and afterwards we still analyze the dynamics of gait, which are very complex. So these lectures are educational and not intended to manage individual patients. They are not a substitute for patients seeing healthcare professionals. Among the reasons are patients vary in no brief presentation, substitutes for formal training. And the summary of this presentation is, this is a multifactorial process and people tend to look for a single problem. Thank you.